We are heading into the final offseason of the NBA 2K16 Knicks My League, and we are really vying to win a championship, but it is not going to be a very busy offseason because we are going to have to give out a couple extensions that are going to eat through our cap, and the free agent class isn't looking particularly strong, but we are going to make a couple moves, so let's get into this. Here are the list of retired players. Nothing really affected us. Amari Stoudemire retired and Dwayne Wade retired. He was maybe somebody that we could have gone after in free agency, but Amari Stoudemire was really just filling out the bottom of the roster. You can see some of the other guys who retired here, but we are going to move on to the draft. We have the 29th pick in the draft, and I knew I wanted to either move up or get somebody that I could actually use. So we're going to trade this Detroit first-round pick and a Miami second-round pick for Tyler Johnson and the Toronto second-round pick this year. And then we are going to flip Tyler Johnson into the 21st pick from Oklahoma City, and we are actually going to keep that pick. But we are going to trade the second round pick that we acquired earlier to get Tabo Cephalosha, who's somebody who can just fill out the bottom of the roster on a pretty cheap contract and is better than anyone I would get in the second round anyway. And with our front 21st pick, we decided to fill out a little bit of the bottom of the roster with Stephen Pollard, a point guard out of UCLA, who had A- minus potential, as you can see right there. Not the greatest stats outside of that, but I was making a play for potential, thinking he might be a good trade asset at the deadline or something, because that's really kind of what I'm playing for, is making a big deadline move when we can kind of know what we have to trade for or who we can trade off the roster. So let's move on to our team player options, Gabe Green, Ton Maker, and Timmy Phillips. We would accept all of those. And then in free agency, we would resign to Chris Topps Porzingis to a five-year, $105 million deal, a little bit less than the max. I actually didn't offer Jaron Grant a contract. I qualified him and I let him sit in free agency to see what kind of offers he would get. And I threw him a kind of lowball offer too. I did offer him something, but I kind of let him sit in free agency so I could hold on to the cap space for a little bit. And the big free agent that I went after was Chris Bosh, still an 80 overall. He only wanted a two-year, $12 million or so contract, but he went to the Nets for less money, which I thought was an interesting move. But even with that in mind, we still had enough money to re-sign our pending or our unrestricted free agents. We gave back Tamari Carroll on a two-year $16 million deal and Ed Davis on a two-year $11 million deal. So it's pretty much going to be the exact same team as it was toward the end of last year when we went on that hot streak. And another team did give Jaron Grant an offer sheet, the Celtics, and it was a little bit more money than I wanted to put out, but I had the cap space, and it still gave me an actually pretty good amount of cap space because if I trade KJ McDaniel's contract, that would give me an extra $6 million anyway, so it wasn't too terrible of a deal for me to match. And here you can see the free agents that we signed to fill out the bottom of our roster. Cephalo, or after Stabo Cephalosha, we have Kyle Singler, Nene, and Darrell Wright. We got a couple bigs and a couple more wing players. So we got a lot of wing depth in case of injuries or what have you. So that's pretty good. And here's a quick look at player progression. Chris Stops Porzingis uh, went up three overall points, and Gabe Green went up three overall points as well. I would send him to perimeter defense training camp, and his perimeter defense would go up to B-. And then with... I Jaron Grant I sent him to outside shooting and his three point and because of team chemistry or morale or whatever their overalls are actually up an extra point so Gabe Green has B perimeter defense which is good because I was banking on him being a little bit better this year than he was last year as well as improved all around defensive play from the entire team so uh, that's pretty much going to do it for this offseason I know it was short but not a lot was happening and there wasn't really a lot to cover so that being said I'm probably only going to do one tr uh episode of gameplay in the regular season maybe two i'm gonna do one before the deadline and talk about maybe what i want to do with the team at the deadline and then maybe one after the deadline so you can see the new players and how they kind of mesh with the team so with that being said thank you guys for watching hope you enjoy it stay tuned for more in the final season of the nba 2k16 nicks my league